good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to HDFC Fredla's uh, platform for getting specialists on board to give you guidance. Um, so Fredla Edge this time is brought to you uh, education in UK at this time. And we all know what this time especially means for all of us and the kind of questions we understand that all of you as an audience have in your mind over the last few months. You understand the world is going through an interesting time right now and it, you know, it's thrown many challenges at us with this pandemic across the world. However, education is something which is a very critical part of your growth journey and for any country, their growth journey. And therefore, um, countries and universities have been taking special steps to make this process a smooth one for all of you. So, um, while we understand that many of you have been, you know, this, you've decided on the kind of destination you want to go to, many of you already have UK as your choice of destination. There are many who are still wondering which country to go to, what course to pursue. And we thought what better than getting specialists from the industry to bring to you the scenario about not just the education but also the economic scenario of the country especially the UK uh, and give you a broad outlook so that you can make your decision uh, in a very you know calculated thought through way so with that I'd like to introduce our panelists for this afternoon um, we have Mr. Srinivas Kaud, the Managing Director, Orient Spectra, with us. Mr. Shabri Nath, who's the Country Director, in India, of Heroit Watt University. And Mr. Bhanu Kaushik, Director, University of Hertfordshire. So thank you so much for being with us this afternoon uh, and taking out the time for this. Uh, we're really looking forward to an inter interesting discussion with all of you. And I know you have many, many things to share. Uh, to begin with, while you know today's theme is about UK, uh, Mr. Srinivas, I'd like to start with you and ask you, you know, while UK has always been a very popular destination, um, there are many other countries that you know students uh, have, look at, compare UK with uh, while making this choice. So how would you really compare UK uh, as compared to maybe uh, other popular destinations like a US, a Canada, Australia, et cetera? Right. Thank you, Chandini, and thank you, HDFC, for organizing this uh, and inviting me for this uh, discussion. Uh, UK has always been a favorite destination for Indian students from decades uh, now. One of us is UK is one of the oldest universities in the world. Uh, which is having history past more than each university is having 200, 300, and 400 years of history. And when you compare with especially with the other uh, Western countries, especially in terms of the US or Australia or Canada, most of the programs in uh, other countries are of two years duration. But when it comes to UK, the master's program is for one year duration. It means that where you can save one year of your uh, time and one year of your living expenses, and just a tuition fees as well. And the cost is almost 50% and still you are studying in one of the world's best universities. And the quality of education is much more comparatively better than other countries. For example, if it is about Canada, they offer mostly diplomas rather than a master's. And if you use the fees is almost double if you compare the same ranking university in UK with the US universities, the fees is almost double. So it is very much affordable, it's very much close, and now the UK is also uh, offering a graduate group scheme, which means that where the student can stay back for two years after the first completion and can do a job search. And if you want to put it down, that there's a much more options now open. And uh, the entry criteria is also very much easier. The application process is not uh, too, uh, not compared to the US and Canada. There is no application fee, per se, and there is no need for you to take too many tests. And the decision and the turnaround time compared to the other countries, UK is much faster. Means there are universities which can offer you an alter within 24 hours and a maximum of uh, one month, not more than that. Whereas compared to the US, you have to prepare almost for one year in advance to get an admission. And the uh, visa interviews or the way 
the UK I commissioned uh, issues the visa is totally different. Means if you have the required document, required set of uh, preparation you have done, you are almost all through. But whereas US is very typical and uh, they don't, we don't know really how they are going to get. Mostly they might uh, look at the academic perspective, but still most of them are rejections in the student cases, which I experienced in my last 15 years of experience that the good students also been rejected the visa, which is not the same with the UK. Thanks. All right. That's, that's interesting. I think many, many reasons for them to consider. And yes, I think one of the popular reasons has been the shorter course duration, which uh, positively further impacts the cost of education too. Um, Mr. Bhanu uh, Kaushik, would you tell us when really is the right time for students to apply for the Jan 2021 intake? Because that's what many would be now preparing for yeah uh first of all uh you know uh, good evening all and chandni thanks for 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 hosting us today uh shrinivas has already said the pitch about uk so let me take it forward now you asked a good question about january uh 21 intake uh i think this is right now the time when the students should be looking into making applications uh, so there are three phases of application. One is, I would say, university selection. The second phase is when you make an actual sele uh, selection of the university. And the third phase is when you are looking into uh, your acceptance and the visa processes. So considering all these three factors in mind, I think uh, if you plan, if, uh, if a student is planning to apply, this is the right time to make an application as well. The point also uh, that I would also like to highlight for January intake is that not many UK universities offer uh, many courses in, in, in Jan intake as well. And so that would mean uh, you would have a, a slightly limited options, but limited seats as well. So, and it's always first come first serve. During the COVID times, a lot of universities, I think almost all UK universities are following the uh, public health uh, guidelines laid down by the UK government of social distancing and all. So keeping that in mind, so the number of seats have gone down for January intake with most of the universities. So it is always prudent for a student to make an application quickly and start applying today itself. So I, I would say that that today is the time to apply now, and make an application. Now, okay. Yeah. okay, great. And and Shakespeare, sorry, about... sorry, uh, I, I just reminded, uh, reminding everybody about a quote from Shakespeare, an English writer. Uh, the quote is, first, I wasted time, not time is wasting me. This should not happen with anybody. Yes, yes, absolutely. And that's why I think we are all here together so that students can make that decision without wasting any further time and you know plan for this um, quickly and while we keep you know hearing a lot about uk uh, per se and there is a lot of information that is there about that uh, we have mr shabri nath here with us who um, and you know uh, mr shabri we'd like to hear about the uh, situation in scotland uh, particularly and you know that's also another popular destination if you could tell us more about that um well thanks i um and of course scotland is still a part of the united kingdom it's 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 not a different place basically so the whole of the united kingdom comprises of england scotland wales and northern ireland um so um if you ask me particularly about the scenario on with um you know are, are you talking in specific with the COVID uh number of races that happened recently in Scotland, of course, there is a slight raise in cases right now, but um, the universities are taking multiple steps basically in Scotland right now um, on with, um, you know, social distancing, whether it's within the campus basically. And of course, we, are, we have a responsive blended learning model uh, specifically for students, which will have both online as well as face-to-face -face teaching wherever appropriate. So we wouldn't have larger cohorts of classrooms, so we will have smaller cohorts basically. And, and of course, um, you know, uh, we, we've been, um, you know, the first minister has asked everyone to wear masks and everything, so that, like, you know, um, you know, if not, there will be a fine of over two hundred pounds, basically. So it's, it's stringent method measures are taken uh, to ensure that Scotland is, uh, you know, if we keep Scotland safe. Uh, quite an interesting factor: the Scottish government has also brought in a, a, a protect app 
uh, which can actually identify um, you know, if there is an affected person who is nearby you, basically, uh, which which actually goes on compliance with the GDPR uh, policies of the United Kingdom, basically. So, uh, Protect Scott is a great app, basically, what people are using. Uh, Scotland is, is 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 a great study destination, uh, and of course, we are all, all the Scottish universities. We are about 18 Scottish universities. We are inviting students to come to study uh, at our fantastic universities because um, you know Scotland. Uh, so it is. The same rules like what you have in the UK, so it is not a different place as such, but it is a part of it's still a part of the United Kingdom. Yes, yes, and I think that's what we wanted to highlight that you know people should not think of it as anything different. It is while it's called Scotland is Scotland, it's you know the probably the same rules apply. Are there any different rules uh, for visa etc? We assuming that would remain the same. Oh, it's it's the same as actually as um, for, for any applicant who looks out for a UK visa. So if they will need a UK student visa, uh, which will be claimed a student visa from the 5th of October. So they will need a, a, a student visa to come to um, Scotland or to UK. It's it's all going to be the same. Yeah. Yes, Pani, you have something. Uh, uh, yes, I have. I, I I just want to share a funny, funny or oh, you know funny thing on uh, you know just just for you to just to. To make them smile a bit. Scotland is also the largest producer of alcohol, one of the largest producers of alcohol, which is used nowadays for sanitizing and stuff like that. So it's a very safe place, I would say. Oh, it is, it is indeed. It is indeed. And, yeah. and, and I, would, I would say, like, you know, uh, I, I would say, like, you know, we are the only university in the UK to offer a master's degree in brewing and distilling as well, which is very unique. So do you get to, do, do, do students get a chance to? To taste it as well while brewing it, or they can just brew it and serve it to others. Uh, <laughs> now, strictly that they can only manufacture. We let them only manufacture, uh, not not taste it much. But when we have when we have festivals, so like we because we have beer festivals, uh, we have competition events, and during those period, of course, the students manufacture, and of course, they have to taste because we have, we want the best of producers in it. So yeah, you have to go. But otherwise, in the labs and etc., we don't permit them. So we only let them manufacture. So that may be interesting information for parents who may be viewing this, that it's a safe place while they produce alcohol. They just have students probably just work there and sanitize their hands with it. And that's the pure use. Um, yeah. And in fact, I was going to ask you, Mr. Shabri, what are the you know top companies? What are the kind of industries which are uh, prominently there for jobs in Scotland? I think you've named one of them. Since we're talking about this, would you want to talk about some more? Oh, of course, very much. Like and I would say, uh, initially, when you look at Scotland, and specifically the capital city is Edinburgh. Um, Edinburgh is the second financial city of UK after London, and it is the fourth financial city of Europe. Right? So that itself shows that financial services is a great uh, sector. And of course, fintech, the new, new, the new concept in the financial technology sector. So fintech is actually uh, it's slowly becoming a fintech hub too. And Edinburgh is also the data capital of the United Kingdom. And uh, so that shows that IT services um, that's uh, uh, for artificial intelligence or IT, um, there, are, there are lots of IT um, infrastructure companies also in a base in there. Construction is a huge area. And how can I forget being geographically located, uh, the great location what we have, we're quite strong for energy resources. So right from oil and gas to renewable energy companies, uh, that are quite a lot there. And again, food, food exports, uh, that's another huge area. And you have also have agriculture, and then again, of course, the like Banu said, the uh, the land of manufacturing of whiskeys and gins and beers, basically. So there are loads of breweries and distilleries that's based in Scotland, and and of course, Scotland is a very touristic destination. So when you look at from that point of view, to, um, you know, tourism is a huge uh, sector, basically. So um, I would say. Uh, the top companies includes the headquarters of Royal Bank of Scotland, RBS is a huge group, uh, basically. So you have uh, British Energy. These are these are naming companies, but the, but the sector is quite strong, basically. So when you look at Scotland, it has got right from the engineering sector to the manufacturing sector, to the IT sector, to the financial services sector, to the food and export sector, to tourism. So we have everything uh, in Scotland. So And of course, Scotland's economy contributes second to the economy of the United Kingdom after London. So that's very strong, basically. 
uh, Scotland contributes a lot. So when the economy is stronger, that means that there are jobs available for students when they are coming to study. And of course, they can do part-time as well as full-time jobs after graduation too. Superb. I think you've spoken about everything that they probably wanted to hear about. So that's, yeah, that's I thought great. Like rather than naming the companies, let me talk, talk about the sector so that they get to know what exactly we have in Scotland too. Yes, yes, absolutely. Mr. Srinivas, so you know, has the admission criteria changed right now? Uh, for example, is IELTS mandatory? And if you could highlight more about this. Uh, basically, for most of the programs, it differs from the university to university and course to course, the requirement keeps changing. But ideally, for most of the universities, the standard test that is ILTS is normally required for the master's program, which is there is a requirement of 6.5 and uh, no band less than 6. And for some universities, for the master's program, it is 6 and no band less than 5.5. They also accept other examinations like TOEFL or PTE, and few universities are also accepting, started accepting Duolingo now. But however, there's not much change for the coming uh, January intake. Uh, however, there are some universities which are accepting the plus two English mark, basic on the 12th standard. Uh, the students have more than 70 or 75 plus a good English uh, from the medium of instruction as English and a good uh, higher first class mark that is 70 or 70 plus. Uh, the IELTS can also be waived for those students based on their eligibility uh, of interview with the university. And some universities are also accepting the MOI, which is called as minimum of instruction as English. So if they have studied their graduation uh, in English medium, then their ILDs can be waived. So provided they have a good communication skills and uh, where the university will be interviewing them and checking their uh, level of English they stand, where they stand. So based upon that, that admission can be granted into those universities. All right. Great. And I think, you know, making a decision on the um, student's choice of university is a very important one. Mr. Banu, uh, what would you say about and what are your tips and guidance for students while they make this decision? Because like you said, this is the right time. So they need to decide now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, this is one of the most important questions that the student should look into. Where should I go and study? Uh, in the world where there are so many options nowadays so which is the best option for me is a multi-million question so uh, i would say uh, the student should start looking at the course first his th there are two kinds of students usually me sabri and srinivas would always meet you know uh, they are either passion driven or they're ambition driven there's nothing wrong being in a passion driven student or there's nothing wrong being an ambition driven student so identify yourself, whether you're a passion-driven student or you're an ambition-driven student, and choose a course that you think is good, number one. Number two, once you've selected the course, then you look at the kind of sector, what kind of sector setting is there in that particular country, especially in the UK. You know, so for example, somebody highlighted so much of things about data sciences and stuff like that. So in the UK, for example, UK has beaten uh, US in the IT sector in terms of attracting investments last year in the IT and technology sector and uh, so so you should look at sector how is the sector particular sector doing in that region or in, in that country then a location where you're going to study uh, in that country the kind of course curriculum the course is offered what what it is in it uh, what is there in the course curriculum uh, the university accreditation the reputation year of history you know the kind of experience that the university has so whether you're going in safe hand or not so uh, you know combining all these factors uh, you you pick up a university then followed by budget yourself so budgeting is very important in especially in the current covid times it's very very important i think budget would play a big role uh, in the current covid times so if whether i'm investing on the right thing or not you know whether it's too expensive or it's too uh, you know is, is affordable so you need to see all those things uh, safety is also a big concern among parents so they you should see how safe uh, they are the, the area and region and combining all these sectors I think it, then it becomes easy to choose uh, a university and, and, and make an application application process is quite straightforward with most of the universities you have to uh, pick up uh, univers universities as per your liking I would suggest students to pick up something like five, six universities, uh, two above their standard, two of their standard, and two just below their standard, so that 
definitely they make into a university. And once they get it, then we do a comparison analysis uh, with the help of uh, our friends like uh, Srinivas, uh, Orient Spectra. They, you, can, you, can, you can analyze, do a comparison analysis, rate which one is better, and then move forward. I think this is the best way to choose a university in the UK. Right, right. That's really interesting. And, you know, while you speak about uh, finances and planning finances there, that's also one of the reasons uh, why HDFC Kredla, um, you know, allows students to come and apply for a loan and do the loan evaluation, finance, basically organizing your finance very early in the cycle just for this reason so that students are not downgrading on those dreams and going for the best universities without worrying about the cost um, yeah. and, and, I think and you, you you rightly said we have seen this trend uh, you know we, we've been witnessing this trend a lot of students come to us they use credula services and they find it more easy and convenient as compared to some of the other banks as well and so, so this is uh, this is a, this is a good initiative that, uh, and 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 this is a good thing that you offer to some of our students and keep doing that. And uh, we always tell them, you know, who takes the loan? The one who has a plan, the one who has a career plan. So I think it's always nice to take a loan and do it. It makes you feel that you know you you it it makes you feel a bit more responsible. Uh, I have personally witnessed that myself. And then because you know uh, you would like to. Uh, return it back so then you're always on a toll to do well in your career and, and, and to your course so i think keeping everything in mind i think uh, you provide the best platform in india as well and i must compliment uh, you for this as well thank you we, we strive to do that thank you uh, so coming on to you know understanding further the biggest question nowadays is online education or should i go for you know the regular form of education while you know many students have dropped their plans as we understand and postponed it for the next session um what is your understanding of this mr Srinivas, about this upcoming intake and what should students really do um you know as a decision between online and face-to-face -face classes Basically, most of the students, this is a common question that I'm getting almost all every day. This is that yes. yeah, we don't want online classes, we want to do a face to face classes, whether the universities are providing this room to provide a face to face classes or not. So, my answer is that yes, most of the universities in the UK are going to be a face to face, and some universities are coming with a, something called blended learning. Maybe there's the, the something that which they can want to teach online. Uh, that is 15 to 20 percent of the total program, maybe. But the majority or the most of the program, the 80 percent will be taught the face to face. And the 20 percent is again uh, only the basing of this, which can be taught online. And the universities have invested a huge amount of money in terms of the development of the such kind of a pl platform where they don't lose that uh, uh, experience. What the student uh, experience is most important for any uh, British university. So they don't want to lose that experience also for the students. So they ensure that even though they are learning online something, that they ensure that they feel that experience and they feel the class atmosphere. And uh, they, they have a plan there in place and most of the universities are already in online teaching from decades together. And they all almost have a ready platform to do that. And uh, they are more focusing now uh, towards the online uh, classes as well. But however, it is only in the world circumstances where the universities uh, will ask you to do an online. Otherwise, it is, it is safer. And mostly now, all the campuses are open in UK, and they are taking uh, all the precautions that are required and uh, that are in place now. So there's nothing to worry. Absolutely, most of the programs are going to be taught and face to face. But if the student wants, now the UK Commission has given uh, a visa. Normally, it used to be a one month. Now they are issuing a visa for three months. But the student parents or the, the country as they're traveling restriction, they still can continue uh, the courses online and uh, within the three months they can start and uh, means they can go to UK and they can start their program, they can register again. Now there is initially it used to be only one kind of registration where means the student goes to uh, UK and register in the university. Now there is uh, one more kind of registration, once the student has to register online now. And if you want to travel at a later date, after the course starting date, where he has an option to 
do a part of his course online and he can join in the month of November. Most of the university will give me time in the November last week. So not to worry much about it. And okay, just don't want to add something here. Yeah, so uh, yes. quick, uh, quick word because this is a very interesting topic. And I think this is a very concerning topic as well among parents and students. Uh, so to, so I, I thought that just to give you a, a university perspective as well uh, on this subject is that uh, as a university, uh, both Sabri, Sabri would also uh, agree with me, we have three, uh, three points of, you know, points where we are focusing right now. One is that how do we take, you know, all these students and make them and give them the best of the best education that we've been given so far. So that's that's our our priority number one. Whether it's with blended learning, whether it's face to face, or whether it's online, the quality of UK education is controlled by a body called QAA, Quality Assurance Agency. So all universities in the UK have to adhere to the guidelines and policies, and they are they are like the watchdog of the of the uh, of the whole education system. So anything that we do, whether it's online, blended, or thing, the quality of education is kept at the, uh, you know, it's given the topmost priority in the, in the UK as well. Now, how we give it, you know, the UK education system gives it in three specialized ways. You know, it's based on theory, research, and practice. So all these components, we also add up, you know, using, using uh, all these three platforms as well. Now, that is our priority number one. Priority number two, is what now in the current pandemic situation is how do we keep all these international students safe with us so that is priority number number two and the priority number three which is again of more importance is once they graduate how do how do we prepare them for the job market and how do we assist them finding these good jobs and good careers once they graduate so these are the three points where all the universities in the uk are fo focusing on and I'm sure when a student comes in, they will experience it themselves that the kind of measures taken up by the UK universities, especially I, I can quote mine and somebody quote, can quote his, is, is fantastic. Like for example, for safety reasons, if a student comes in, we have a software called a Track and Tracer. So if you're going to a lab, you would have an I, you would have your phone, a smartphone. You can just scan it and you will get to know who all are there in the class and what is there, you know, if there is a, is a possible threat of a virus or infection or something like that, that can be managed and can be traced. Uh, then in terms of accommodation and stuff like that, social distancing measures, uh, keeping the students happy, safe and engaged. Uh, we, I think we are doing an extraordinary, we are doing extraordinary things and taking extraordinary measures to address everything what they, they're expecting to, to come down and do that. Now the question that you asked, Chandni, I think Tushnivas was about online versus versus this. Now uh, uh, there are two aspects what we have, uh, uh, th that I have seen. Number one is there is an educational aspect, and then there is a study abroad aspect, which is also very important. So a lot of students, their their focus is on 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 doing a course and and selecting a course. Then we also meet some students who are saying that, okay, I would like to do a course, but parallelly, I would like to have an international exposure as well. You know, because at times you learn things more out of the classroom than you are at times in the classroom. And, you know, the best, best thing about studying abroad is that you pay for the course, but the intangible benefit that you learn, that you get by studying abroad, like, you know, you get cultural awareness, you make new friends, you get good networking and you can develop an and the possibility to develop an international career uh, you only get it when you when you come and travel abroad so we are trying our level best in the current covid situation to address both the academic side and the study abroad uh, aspect and that's why most of the universities i would not say uh, very few but majority of them have started with blended learning where if there is a large group of you know let's say on a monday i have a large lecture on that day on that day, probably I will give you an online class because I would not expect you to be there in a, in a crowd, crowded place. But when we have a smaller classroom size groups or one-to-one -one tutoring sessions during the week, then it will be more face-to-face. -face. In the lab again, we will make sure that if my lab can take 60 people, I will only accommodate 
10 at the moment maintaining social distancing but i will make sure that they get the adequate resource to use it and they get adequate time to use it so that's where the infrastructure comes in, uh, in play and when you compare it with indian school infrastructure and you compare it with the british in, uh, universities infrastructure that's where the difference is because most of the british universities have a very large infrastructure to address these needs so that is why their learning will never will not be hampered and they will be able to continue what they want to do and with or without covid right yeah i agree and i totally about, agree to what bonnie has said yes yes and i think talking about covid uh, uh, shabri would you you know tell us whether the covid 19 test is mandatory in uk and is quarantine compulsory uh, for students how does accommodation be taken care of at that time okay right um, it is very important for every applicant who comes into the united kingdom no matter whether it's england scotland or wales or northern ireland uh, they will have to quarantine for 14 days basically and they don't have to do a quarantine uh, sorry they don't have to do a covid-19 test from india but if they are doing one then it is well and good but all they have to do is before they travel they got to register 48 hours because there is a link which is provided by the the home office Uh, which is publicly available on uh, fco.gov.uk website basically um they will need to register themselves uh, on with where exactly they can actually register 48 hours before they travel so they will need to provide a definite address of where exactly they're going to stay uh, what is the current visa status etc with the visa numbers with the passport information etc so that like in a home or in a um home officials would be able to locate and track them very well and every applicant every student who comes into the uk not just student or every international who comes into the uk will have to quarantine themselves for 14 days so what i would recommend students is that like they need to have a, a, an accommodation place fixed up right from here they should know where they are going to stay for the next 14 days so that like you know authorities uh, um, the health authorities and and the officials would be able to locate them in case of an emergency so uh, these are stringent methods what the country is taking and if they don't know where exactly they are going to stay then they might be denied entry at immigration so um, we're taking all those measures to keep uh, the whole united kingdom safe yeah is the university also taking any special steps to support students to get accommodation of course very much and in our university um, we we have about 2000 plus rooms available so um, so we in our accommodation services so we have uh, current we are providing quarantine support to uh, our students so what we are doing initially is we have uh, out of the 11 blocks we have taken about two blocks where we are actually putting them as quarantine units basically so when these students come in so we quarantine them for 14 days and after they complete the quarantine and if they if they if we find them they don't have any symptoms um etc then we move them to the main block you know so that they can you know go to a safer zone with other students basically so how we are going to do do a doing this at our university which might differ from another university um is basically so what we have is we have individual rooms where we have a group of five basically so when each each group of five comes in so we will ask them to quarantine um in individual five rooms basically and then once after they finish their 14 days then we move them out so during these 14 days we also provide them with um you know food and uh, necessary items for uh, the initial first one week but however uh, after that you know we also support them with delivering food materials etc um, and also we provide them with um, you know hand sanitizers with mask etc and we also have an nhs facility within our campus so that if in case there is an emergency um, they will be attended immediately so these are various ways for how we supporting students and of course we do have a um, um, resident uh, of these are resident life students basically so um, uh, rest life we call them as rest life students basically but so these are actually student volunteers who are for supporting our current students who come on quarantine to get any kind of material if they want anything so they they go to the shops and then they get it and give it to these students so we provide all these extra services extra help to students to say to show to because they it's the first time they're getting into a country and they're asked to quarantine for 14 days so we need to give them the support so that they have a smoother um, uh, and a welcoming um, approach i would say yeah. yeah yes great and while we move to um 
the questions that there are many questions coming by our viewers uh, I'd just like to take one question before that on the visa and I'm sure that's going to be one answer that many students are going to be waiting for is to understand the current visa process what is the duration and how have the rules changed Mr. Shiruas, uh, could you uh, throw some light on that please yes normally the UK visa used to be for usually for one month and once the student goes there, then they register, then the uh, is extended for the course duration plus four months. That was the normal practice. But uh, because of this COVID situation, and the UK may have changed, and now they're issuing the visa for three months. It means that students can travel, but the university allows them any time within those three months, which are taking the last registration date with the university. So after, once they uh, reach there, then they can extend their visa for the duration of the course. And after the course duration, plus four months, then they are, can also convert that into a, a graduate route, which means that the student can stay back in UK for two years. That is also called as a popularly known as PSW, post study work visa, means where the student can stay back in UK on the successful completion of his bachelor's or master's program, where he is allowed to stay back in UK and search for a job. So this is what the, how the uh, structure is there for the, at this point of time. And this will be, will be starting from the summer uh, 2021, and all the students who have already been there for the last intake and plus who are going for the next intake will all be allowed to stay back in UK for two years for the completion. Right. Mr. Bhanu, we often speak about uh, the GIR. Sabri wants to. Sabri wanted to add something. I, I want to add something because I think your question was more towards the new visa rules that is coming in place from the 5th of October. Yeah, so if, if it is that basically, yeah, it's known as, the, it, it, the current visa system is known as known as tier four student visa route, and that's going to change, and, it, and the new, new terminology is known as student visa. So a student will require to have 70 points in order to have a visa. So 50 points on their confirmation of studies, that's um, a, a sponsorship number what the university would give in, and 10 points on with English language, and it is up to the university to, you know, waive that of, you know, give that 10 points basically um, based on with various uh, checks what they do. It can be an English language test like an IELTS, PTE, TOEFL, etc., or maybe a medium of instruction or a 10 to 12 English. So it is solely up to the up to the sponsor to decide that basically. So you get the 10 points from that and then 10 points on with maintenance. That is, you need to show that you've got sufficient funds to take care of your first year living expenses as well as your first year tuition fee whilst being a student in the UK. Uh, so um, in London, um, the, I think the, there is a slight raise in the living expense cost basically. But what, what, because your university being in the London region, what's the cost basically? Yeah. Um, so it's, 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 uh, it's slightly going up. Yeah, so. It's uh, going so, to about 12,000. Yeah, but yeah. fortunately, yeah. Uh, this year they are, they are considering, uh, con con considering us as outer London University. The last year okay. they were considering right. us as London Inner Borough. So I'm pretty happy that this, yeah. this will not affect us. Right. Okay. But, uh, fine. All right. Uh, for open, open, open London, London University, or, uh, eleven thousand plus now, and eleven thousand uh, plus, London and is slightly uh, one thousand less than the London living right, right, right. one thousand less. Absolutely. So it's gonna so, be, it, it, um, yeah, it's gonna be an interesting year. Uh, for uh, it's gonna be more easier for UK. Uh, UK, uh, UK government has announced that they want the brightest and the best. And looking at that, they have made the made some changes and made it much more easier uh, than before so uh, now initially we used to have we used to give 40 points now the student needs to have 70 points so the CAS used to be for 30 30 points now the CAS needs to be for 50 and the finance remains again 10 and the, then then there is English language which is for 10 as well so if the student gets 70 you get your visa simple yes. simple as that it's yeah, now, exactly. yeah. That There's a point based system which is more work as a more streamlined. And of course, like you know, and that is one thing, great thing because UK wants to show that we have we want to welcome the best and best students to come into the country, basically. So the the point based system makes it more streamlined, basically. So that's that's welcomed by all institutions across the United Kingdom. Yeah. Mr. Bhanu, could you also throw some light on the GIR route? Uh, we also have right. we, Ria, which, who is you know viewing this, who wants to know about this. All right. See, GIR is Graduate Immigration Route. 
which is uh, which is a new route which has been introduced by the UK government uh, and you know uh, for, for 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 students who are coming down on on a student visa to the UK and uh, it has uh, not uh, you know it, it, it's it's a simple extension visa I would say what's previously it used to be called as a post study work visa but uh, I would say the the attributes are the same but the names has has changed. So now instead of uh, calling it as a PSW, it's the, they, they're calling it as a graduate immigration route visa uh, with slight and minor changes. But the content is the same that you are allowed to stay back post post completion of your course for two years. So what they look at primarily is that as, as I said before as well that the UK government intention is to get the best and the brightest. Now what is what what is the definition of best and the brightest? The best and the best brightest definition according to the UK government is that somebody who has studied from their top recognized universities, you know, successfully. So if you have done a course, whether from Hertfordshire or from here it was, uh, successfully, uh, that means you are you are moving one step towards graduate immigration route visa, um, you know, thing. Uh, then they would expect that if you are staying on a student visa, then there are certain rules and regulations of a student visa as well. Whether or you are, whether you are following these regulations or not, they will keep a monitor on it. If you are, then you are again one step more closer to getting this visa. Then there could be a small thing as well that you know how was your behavior in the UK as during as as a student, whether you got involved into some sort of a criminal activity or not. That will also be they will also look into that. You know, so 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 these are the simple things that they look at. In practically, the more emphasis is that you you study well be a good student and follow the rules of a student visa, you are eligible to apply for this scheme. Now this scheme is for two years and it's a non-extendable scheme. So that means you cannot do this again and again and again. This is an opportunity for you where you can work with companies which are not even registered on the government website to, to sponsor you tier two or a, or a work visa, you know? So you can work with any number of, uh, with, with any organization and there is no cap on this number uh, there is no uh, salary cap on this so you can work anywhere anytime with whomsoever so it's more flexible visa so your attempt should be that after you know finishing the course get into GIR and then in this GIR try to convince an employer to sponsor you for a proper work visa which will be considered for your settlement visas later on, the time duration that you spend on your work visas and other will be considered. And that, that, that's the route that you have to follow. So GIR is an excellent scheme which has been launched. And I'm sure all those who are coming down this year, uh, you know, they will be the beneficiary of this scheme. And, and it's very easy. There will be a small visa fee involved to it. There will be a small health search charge which will be attached to this as well when you do. And you, have, you can apply for this visa while you are there in the UK on your student visa. So once you finish your student visa, you will get four months extra in the end. And during that period, you should make this application. Most of the universities will also assist you and guide you about this once you come and arrive with us. So do not worry and it's a, it's a, it's a very welcoming step and I'm sure uh, this is, uh, all the students are, are, are excited about it, but it has increased mine and Sabri's workload like crazy. <laughs> Much awaited one, actually. I would, I would like to add yeah. a, bit, uh, a more more point, basically. Like my said, like you know, students who have completed the uh, level six course and above, that's undergraduate or postgraduate. Uh, the duration would be for two years, but if if you are a PhD student, then that would be for three yeah. years. So that that's that's that one more thing to be yeah. added. All right. We have questions coming about fee payment, whether fees can be paid in installment and who the sponsor could be. Uh, Mr. Srinivas, could you uh, tell us more about this? Right. So, again, it depends from university to university, but most of the universities are allowing to pay the tuition fees in installment, where the initial deposit from India, that is before the cash or before the visa, that they have to pay the 50% in general, I'm talking about. Most of the universities allow uh, to pay 50% of the tuition fees from India, and the rest of the fees can be paid in installment once the student goes back to uh, the uh, desired university. Each university has their own set of rules, but again, 
Portland University asking to pay some part of the tuition fees at the time of registration, and the rest of them can be paid in the next semester wise, or, but otherwise, if the course duration is of one year, within the first six months, uh, mostly the, all the universities are asking to pay the complete the tuition fees. So, um, sponsor, come to the sponsor. Uh, the idea of uh, UK uh, education or UKI commission, what they look at is that uh, the student has the potential to pay his tuition fees and living expenses, whichever the university is going. So first thing that uh, they, they should have the money or the fees to pay. And the next is the living expenses. So if the going for some around in and around London, uh, if it is coming to London, there is about some 11,000 change money that is required is 11,500 pounds, I believe, or 11,900 now. So that is the living expenses. Plus the balance of the tuition fees to there has to be shown. Uh, who are the natural sponsors? So generally parents, so father, mother, or if not, the funds can be shown on the student, in the student's account. But the, there is a clause by in uh, NH that the fund should be 28 days old by the time they make an application for the visa. So okay. the fund should be taken from a fixed deposit, or it, it can be allocated as in the savings account. But the fund should be maintained for those 28 days period of time. So and they should get a statement from the bank showing uh, an evidence that the funds are maintained and should be on a proper uh, alliterate of the bank and uh, official stationery of the bank with the sign and signature from the bank manager, which ensures that the funds are intact. So with education going online, are universities also reducing cost? No, as of now, there's no such change of fees, but there are of course there are some scholarships which normally apply, which is always there. But uh, because most of the universities are going for face-to-face -face classes and uh, maybe I just Bono and Shabri told that they are uh, ensuring that uh, either the blended learning still there are agencies like QA and all, though, which ensures that there is nothing less that they're going to learn even if it is online or is blended or is face-to-face. -face. Uh, Shabri, you want to add something? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, because um, like Bano said earlier, so because we don't compromise on with the quality of what we have to offer. We want to give them the best and best education, and that's not compromise at all. So that blended learning, whether it would be having a mix of both online as well as face-to-face -face teaching, and of course, wherever appropriate, basically. So we don't compromise on with quality. So the tuition pay uh, would be the same, but few universities are offering uh, certain help for students because when you look at it right now, uh, there are, because when you look at airfares, the airfares are skyrocketing at times, basically. So a few universities are giving a bit of a support there, um, a kind of a, a travel bursary, et cetera, to slightly reducing it for the tuition fee, but not generally. But very few in number are offering such kind of uh, bursaries. Can I, can I, can I yes. also add to this point, Chandni, yes. is that yes. now this is also an important point to note that let's say UK universities are, are, are giving some, we are, it's not that we're not giving that kind of support, we're giving them some kind of scholarship. Most of the universities have announced some kind of a scholarship. Could be, they, they either named it, uh, you know, because of, co, uh, it's because of COVID or X, Y, Z, but they have good bursaries, uh, you know, to cover up the, the expense and, and to take care of the, the thing as well. But what I'm trying to also bring in a comparison now, if you have to do the same kind of a course in the United States, it will be more expensive. Or if you would like to do the same course in Australia, which will three or four times the cost. So again, if you look at the UK education overall, it will provide you a more cost effective solution as compared to the rest of the six English speaking countries as on today. So the quality is there. The, 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 the education is also there and the cost is also suiting the budget of an Indian parent as well. Yes. I, 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 would, I would say this as well. Great. Yeah, absolutely. And for those who may be looking for part-time jobs, do you think that opportunity is available, Mr. Banu? Yes, uh, part-time jobs. So in, during the term time, uh, you can work 20 hours uh, a week. And during a non-term time, you can work even full-time as well. So as a student, there is there are no changes uh, in, the, in the current policy. So they, you, you are allowed to work part-time. And part-time jobs are important, you know, and, and all Indian students should try their hand in it. Whether you can, whether you would like to do it, you know, just because as an experience or, you know, it, it, it's a good thing to do. Number one is because it, uh, it has a lot of intangible benefits. You know, it improves your communication. It improves your knowledge about do's and don'ts of working in the UK. It improves your network. So there are numerous opportunities 
that you can also you know explore by working part time as well and the uk allows that and if you are about 21 year of age uh, in the uk then you are entitled for an 8.7 pound an hour wage rate and somebody correct me if i'm wrong so uh, it is approximately right. to that yeah so uh, so rate as well so usually when i talk to students they ask me so how much i can earn as well i said you can indian students are known for their mathematical skills you can do the maths there are 52 weeks multiply that by 20 hours and then multiply by that eight hours you'll you'll get an idea now i'm not saying that the very first day you land up and you'll get a job or in the covid situation it is good to go and do that we suggest right. students this is don't see part time job as as a source to make money only see this as a source where you can also learn things and understand different culture and you need to create a balance between learning and these kinds of activities for you when okay. you arrive the most important thing is how you know there's a saying called penny wise pound foolish so don't miss your classes just because you got a you, you have to go and and work uh, um, somewhere so your primary aim is to study make sure when you arrive you have adequate funds to survive but apparently if you can spare more time if you have you have time to do because one hour one year the course curriculum is going to be very intense and if but then indian students have exceptionally good skills as compared to students from around the world so they always find time to do extra things as well so if they can if they have the time then they're allowed to do this in the uk I would say that. right and i think that's where uh, education loans also comes into play and you know we suggest many parents especially that you know let the student just focus on the education this is what you're Absolutely. really primarily investing into in terms yeah. of time this is a critical and a fantastic opportunity so the jobs and part-time jobs are nice to have i think as add-on experience like you said absolutely but, uh, absolutely and i'll also I'll, I'll also add one one thing my own personal experience and i'm sure shabri and and Srinivas will agree is that when you when you do your part-time job and you and you get your first paycheck i think it gets gives you the sense of freedom as well you know in you feel more independent on that day once you receive that thing first thing in your hand so i think it's a must experience for everybody they should do plus i at times you 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 come down from a very super wealthy family but then when you experience that then you 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 also get to see the ground reality how things are and all the stuff so it puts you on down you you are on your own and that's that's also one of your initial steps which makes you independent in life right yeah absolutely i, I totally agree and and also please know that um, you should adhere to the government's policy that you shouldn't work more than 20 hours. Yeah, that's one yeah, that is also. Otherwise, you might found, you might risk your TIR. Working, yeah, if you're found <laughs> working, you'll be deported from the country. <laughs> and you will risk but your TIR. So so <laughs> I think it's been a fantastic session today uh, from information on blended learning and quality of education, uh, you know, which is so clearly and uh, minutely monitored i think information about the cas and the gir which so many people wanted to know there are many questions about that that people had put in from of course the visa laws and the you know employment opportunities that you told us about i think it's it's been fabulous i'm sure students will be able to now uh, in a very focused way get down to the application like mr bhanu said the time is now um education is critical and i don't think we should you know waste any further time in planning and going ahead and connecting with all of them to one you know know your clear path and go ahead and um, apply and you know get get your dream get into your dream universities and further dream jobs so thank you so much uh, mr Srinivas, mr bhanu and mr shabri for taking out thank the time you, it's really been a fabulous well. session. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. It's been thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure to have you all there. Yeah. All thank right. you so thank much. You. Close the thank session. Thank you. And be safe and take care. Thank you. Thank you.